Okay, this is take two because the audio didn't work on the other one and the other one was well done. Okay, today's uh, language learning is about the biggest tool that you have that you already possess for learning a language. And this is going to be a connection here because I want to cover a few things that were said by Luca since he's now going to an interpretation and translation school in France. So he's being... Uh, introduced to a lot of things, uh, probably meaning theory and relevance theory for translation. Those are two huge methods. Uh, he's using some specific techniques now uh, for actual interpretation or translation. Uh, I don't really need to get into those, but one of the areas that he touched on before that and now that he's really using is something that I'm going to make a nexus with because it's hugely important for field linguistics also. Uh, I'm not going to give you free information how to be a, f a field linguist, but I am going to cover what is the biggest tool that you already possess to make your language learning better and more efficient. Uh, okay. Now, I've also noticed that, uh, for example, uh, Dr. Aguayas has used parts of this. He's talked about it a little bit, but philologists uh, uh, are not people who do documentation of undocumented languages. I notice he called for people to do that or something, but they don't have the background. Philologists only work with those languages that already have scripts and with a big literary background, which is what he's done, which he's spent a lot of the time doing, which he's very good at. But philologists just don't have the, they don't have the phonology. They don't understand the grammar uh, well enough. They don't understand how to describe a grammar, they don't know how different grammars work in different languages, especially those languages that do not have a script. Okay, so that's why I said that Steve Kaufman or Lao Shu or any of these other YouTube want to be great nobodies can not learn an unscripted language. And of course, you want to argue with me, all the sick fans, about that, but the bottom line is they can't learn it. They can't approach it. They don't know how because they don't have the skills. Okay, now. One of the ways that's very important to use uh, field linguistics is to make the unknown known. So this is making the implicit explicit, and this is one of the things that a lot of people have a problem with, and this is where a lot of the people who are babbling on all these different forms, these hackney forms, these non-academic forms, these uh, dilettante forms, uh, and um, YouTube, chatter about well what about this what about that because they don't know because they haven't studied anything and they're running into problems now what Luca was talking about in part is something that uh, is used quite a bit of course at the FSI and DLI and that is translation but not translation in the same way that a lot of people are using it uh, interpretation. Interpretation is actually the oral part. Translation is the iconic writing, the script, taking one script and putting it to another script. Okay, the interpretation is taking one set of sound waves and changing it to another language's sound waves. Now, interpretation, of course, is harder <laughs> than translation. You have more time with translation. You have a lot more uh, resources to get to with translation because of the time that you do have whereas interpretation you don't it's all got to be there especially idiomatic usage is uh something that has to be this chair is not good <laughs> there's uh, something you have to ha already possess okay now to get to this uh there are a lot of things that i got to say uh just to cover basis like you've heard me talk about right hemisphere learning Yes, that's very powerful and very good, and it's, you should be doing it. You should be doing everything. You should have a multimodal uh, method of learning. However, things like ALG, where the director of the ALG program himself says he cannot translate, cannot in interpret, he's useless, he's worthless to other people. It's just, you know, where is he going to exist in a geolocked language of Thai, for example, where it's not going to be necessary in any sort of working environment to make that into another language and he cannot do it. He can understand it implicitly but he cannot make it explicit in another language. That is not a skill. That is not a saleable skill and that is something you should be thinking about. It's also not a skill because you can't tell other people that don't speak that language. 
So the gist and communicative approach where you kind of got the meaning, you sort of got the overall meaning, it can mean this, it can kind of sort of mean that, it can kind of sort of mean that, is okay. And over time, people get tighter on what it means. But that's not as good as knowing precisely what the difference of, uh, of switching things to the imperfect subjunctive, for example, in, in um, Spanish, for example. And the subjunctive is just part of a whole thing called irrealis in actual grammar terms. There's, and there's a lot more to irrealis. But, but the term subjunctive is sort of this more global, not very precise uh, idea of why the language does is where it's trying to actually express a pragmatic usage. That's what happens. The subjunctive is a way of expressing pragmatic usage of the language. So, you know, yo, yo fuera rico, tendría más coches, you know. That's the, that's the uh, imperfect subjunctive with the conditional for the things. Now, a lot of people want to be scared of grammar. But the thing is, grammar is not how you people are thinking of it in this prescriptive terms. It is descriptive. There's a lot of there's a lot of different ways to look at things, especially languages that are not that are not SVO, not subject verb object, which is what the English speakers are used to, and always want to say, well, this is here, this should be there. It doesn't exist like that in some languages. That 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 structuring a typology does not exist, and some things don't exist. Their ideas of a verb, an adjective are not the same as what they are, say, for example, in Thai. You know, there, there are attributal uh, verbs in, in Thai that don't exist in English. So people go around and say, well, they're missing the copula. They're missing the linking verb. It doesn't have to have that in this language, <laughs> for example. But those are the things that the grammar, you should not be scared of grammar. Grammar is an incredible, in, intelligent, fascinating subject because that is how the language works. And now you have all these idiots on all these sites saying, I don't need grammar. I don't study grammar. I don't do this. If you, can, if you can't speak the language, you have no grammar. If you can speak the language, you have grammar. What these dilettantes don't know is that they don't have an explicit understanding. When you, you're L1, you have an implicit understanding of the grammar. You just don't know why you do it. They say, that's the way we do things. That's just how it's said. That's how we express ourselves well because you don't have the capacity to explain it and once again that's where a linguist differs from these dilettante hackneyed people they're capable of understanding why they know the whys and they can tell someone else the whys and that's what's important if you want to be a good learner you have to go to somebody who can explain it to you or get sources that can explain it to you or you have the ability because you've learned the skills to explain it to yourself which is what field linguists do when they go to an unscripted undocumented language that no one's ever worked in before they can get thousands of words in a couple of weeks or some techniques and I'm not giving them to you on how to do that once they start getting the lexicon they can look at how that syntax is used in that language and start looking at pragmatic and semantic usages and get to start looking at the grammar and if there's a morphology in the language or if if it's an isolating language, they're going to look at that, look at what particles, start trying to figure out particles. It may take years to figure out exactly what the, uh, you know, there might be evidentials. It might be in a, it might be an ergative language, uh, you know, it may not be a nominative uh, objective language. Uh, so there's a lot of things to look at. But those are things that linguists do because they know what to look for. They know what's going on. They have basis of information. Now, that's why I said, once again, that Steve Kaufman and Laos, you could not learn unscripted, undocumented languages because they don't have the skill set. All right. Now, to get back from what field linguists and what, uh, back to and, and saying with Luca again, because I like what I'm hearing from him because he's getting more academic in his approach uh, as well as just being good <laughs> at the ability. Uh, at, he's not just a performer. Now he's understanding the performance which makes him better, makes him a, a more profound person. So that is translation. Now something that is very true with translation uh, is that those people retain the languages longer because you always got your L1 and that's what the biggest tool that you have is, is your L1 and that's what field linguists use too. They take their L1 in, they start eliciting uh, the L2 lexicon from their L1 and there's ways, I'm not telling you, and same thing here with the language. When you know 
what you always have your L1 and you spend all these years uh, with, exper with experiential learning, modeling people, being in a lot of situations. Uh, everybody learns uh, with a different system, meaning that they might be strong. Most people are stronger visually. Some people are auditorily very strong, which means that they're unique. Uh, that's why they see musicians who have uh, good relative pitch and absolute pitch can learn languages better because they are learning auditorily, which is true. Uh, I've heard from a degree of people um, I mean that I've witnessed, but they can learn from just hearing. They remember from just hearing, which is very good for languages because their sound and meaning, right? And then other people, a smaller percentage who are kinesthetic. Now, kinesthetic is a smaller group, but it is a much stronger memory system. And when it's merged with the reticular activating mechanism, which is part of the limbic system, which is your emotional system, uh, it is the strongest memories that we have. You will remember, you'll remember physical, emotional memories more than anything else because why because we're evolutionarily hardwired for that that's part of how we were able to survive if you crack the ice during the winter and fall into the river but are able to pull yourself out and survive that you're going to remember that event because it's going to be one shooting off so much adrenaline uh, in your body nor adrenaline that you're going to be excited your heart rate's going to go up it's going to be a stimulation where your whole body was galvanized and focused one and it's also a kinesthetic event where your whole body was engaged in that event you don't have to go through the ice two or three times to try to learn it you know it's not abstract to you so that's why i'm going on these other things because i have a huge background in all this sort of stuff and this is why uh i know all these things uh so to you know downshoot the dilettante hackneyed morons who are on other forms trying to run me down you know, here I am. Come here. I know you're scared shitless to come here because you don't have, you can't even put your name or your real photo up because you're just a coward living in your mom and dad's basement, <laughs> wanting to run your mouth, and that's all you'll ever be trying to be a detractor, you know, and and saying things about me and other people's YouTube's because you just don't have the you don't have the guts to do anything else, you know. So what a pathetic little life, you know. Anyway, so so much about the detractors. Let's get back on track here with the actual uh, what's going on. So I'm going to give you, I'm going to give you right now. So what about this big tool? Okay, this is a gigantic tool. Just me pointing it out. It's worth a lot of money now. All right, you can always use this tool. Well, how can you always use this tool? And this is what sort of Luca was saying in one of his uh, recent videos uh, that I was that I was watching. I think he said it more in French than in English, but. Um, uh, or he said more in the French video than he did in the English video is what I'm trying to get to. Uh, Italian was too fast for me. I couldn't get, every, get everything in that video. Anyway, so the point being is that you can practice. So when you, one of the ways, one of the things to do is to listen to songs. And you can translate that that's writing it down script wise or the harder skill is to hear it and then try to say it back in your l1 now that's you don't have a lot of time so that's what makes you good at processing picking up your processing speed because that is a skill you, processing gets faster and you'll also notice that you don't know some of the words and the same thing can happen you can take a song you can do it the other way you can do it there's two ways to do it all right you can take it from you can take your l1 you, you're listening to your, your song in your native language and you put it in the l2 now that generally means that you know everything you're hearing in l1 so you'll know where your your gaps are when you try to translate it or interpret that you're going to have giant gaps you know unless you're really good especially idiomatic sayings you're not going to know you know what, what how do i say it rains cats and dogs you know, pull my leg these are all stupid sayings uh or pulling your hair you know where the hell do these where's the etymology of these stupid you know phrases in english anyway so you have to learn how to you know change change that like there's a great one in uh spanish you know no hay cuatro gatos aquí you know let you i'm not going to tell you so let's see who knows anyway so that is an idiom, but the thing is you can do that with songs. That's one of the good ways to do it. Now, when you get really good, you can do rap, which is, you know, I can't understand rap and L, my L1 sometimes because of the dialect, uh, you know, and a lot, of, a lot of semantic changes have happened to with how they're trying to use words. So it's not important to get that, but I'm just saying you can play with that, is to watch uh, TV. Watch factual things. 
where people are speaking to each other like uh, not the news that's faster because they have it they're reading okay but things where they have to actually have to think like uh, uh, some sort of interaction talk show where there's one side versus the other side in a debate or showing their thing that will give you a good chance to to practice and then of course you can go to movies but once again they're speaking dialogue that they've rehearsed so it's not quite like real life because it's faster and you'll pick up your processing seat which is something that uh, Luca was talking about you know having to get faster at processing there's some things you can do um, you, know, you could start trying to think in, in pictures and visuals and not uh, relaying it in text trying to remember it in pictures not everybody can do that um, <clears throat> some people actually can remember all the sounds so you know that's incredible the anyway but uh, getting on to that so that's how you can practice that now you can do something else that that's very this is very prevalent at FSI and DLI is that when somebody speaks to you you <laughs> repeat it back to them in the other language which is kind of funny because at DLI you'll have people you'd have people someone says something in English you got a guy in Arabic Korea and a guy a Korean guy and a Chinese guy in Thai all saying it in those languages back which is it's weird unless you're in the environment then it's sort of something normal because you get you've been taught to do that because your processing speed has to be high and you have to be accurate you just can't sort of understand where someone's dropping a bomb do you understand you get what I'm saying to you? So that just in communicative approach or I'm ALG and I can't tell you is useless and worthless to everybody. So that is one of the, you know, one of the reasons why translation is good. And once again, that the people who have this translation ability can retain their L2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 longer because they always have their L1, which means they can practice it. If their translation interpretation skill is high and they're accurate, then they can practice it and they can also look at where their holes are. Like, for example, I guarantee you, like uh, somebody who's going on these, trying to get 60 languages and doesn't live in the milieu, like uh, Lao Shu, doesn't know what shoelaces, doesn't know the word for shoelaces in probably almost every one of those languages. He cannot talk about Sartre or Kierkegaard in those languages. If he fell down and punctured his leg with the... Uh, uh, I fell onto a spike and it was sticking uh, it was sticking close to the femoral artery. I bet he can't express can't explain that in on a mobile phone to a hospital that he was able to call. I bet he can't do that. So those are tests. Now that those you know tests, people say you speak the language. You don't speak the language unless you live in the environment because then you're going to realize how little you actually do know and you can't express yourself. You know you're going to they're going to want to revert to their L1. That's what I see happens all of the time. Now I've given you this, the big tool here and that is translation. But translation at a high level with a, with doing it very quickly and you can. That's with the TV, with the practicing with the TV, or you can practice with the radio. I used to do that. The radio is uh, very good. Nobody else has to see you or hear you or anything else. So you can pick up your speed there. And then when you go out to speak to people, they're going to be like, "Wow, this guy speaks quickly." You know, uh, that's one of the things I, I yeah, I just wanted to mention too about Luca. You know, because he was saying, you know, everyone says that he speaks quickly. Um, actually, I don't think. Uh, you know, uh, listening to his Spanish, no, he sounds normal speed for someone in Spain, which is a higher speed than, say, in Mexico. He sounds about normal speed for someone in France. In English, he sounds a little bit slow to me. Of course, now his Italian sounds fast, a lot faster than, than other Italians. Um, German, uh, what I've heard, he wasn't, you know, like the Blitzkrieg, you know. <laughs> in the German, but his ability to process his thoughts quickly is why he can speak quickly and fluently, and that's what he's aiming for in his prosody and everything else he's doing. So that's just part of part of what makes him successful uh, is that, and what's made a lot of other people successful who do this, and that is using that ability that you can practice all the time, basically, and that's what separates it from, say, um, the ALG sort of method or other methods along those lines. Not that that discounts those methods. You should be multimodal and learn from everything and every way possible, because that's what you do as a child. Uh, I mean, you get a lot of, you get a lot of phonological uh, help, too, that you don't get as an adult. 
All right. Now, okay, so that's it on this one. So once again, uh, have a real name, <laughs> have a real photo. Uh, you're not getting, you're not getting on here. I, I noticed that I'm starting to attract people with a higher academic sense, which is what I want. I don't want the dilettantes. I don't want the hackneyed people. I don't want the sycophants who are hanging around on those other people's forums and other why YouTube's talking about how great you are, how great you are that you that you covered some you know book, a tourist book now and you tried to give me insight into the tourist book and you gave me some hackney things and you and you and you're trying to explain uh articulatory phonetics and sort of ah, ah, that a, a guttural sound yeah very accurate there any of those people i don't care i don't want them i don't want you i want the people who are actually want to learn and who endeavor to invest in themselves and the people who do things like say hey i i didn't get i didn't read through all the the your the answers i didn't check out all your videos so give me this answer it's not happening i'm not going to do it you know research this is about research this isn't about me giving you everything because you're not paying me one damn thing number one number two is that why would i invest in somebody who won't invest in themselves and that goes for you on anybody's stuff do the research look it up for yourself do put in the time okay put in the energy and the time if you're not unwilling to put in the time and energy and you want the benefit not happening for me not happening for me uh so go off and uh you know be a sycophant elsewhere because i don't want that sort of person here so detractors live in your basement run your mouths all right yeah <laughs> okay so i'll talk to you again later <laughs>